most land surveyors are not good boundary surveyors. Uh, some of you watching this video are going to be surprised to hear me say that, but it's true. Uh, so one thing I've learned over my 20 year career in land surveying is that uh, most land surveyors are good construction surveyors and pretty crummy boundary surveyors. <laughs> so I want to talk about why that is and why it's important to you if you're making an investment in real estate. Okay. So why are most land surveyors bad boundary surveyors? Uh, well, I got three reasons why that happens. One is uh, to be a good boundary surveyor really requires a huge investment of time and effort. Um, I think substantially more time and effort uh, than it takes to be an expert in other types of surveying. So it's not that other types of surveying don't require an investment. So it does take time to be a good construction surveyor, or a good topographic surveyor, uh, but it's, it takes uh, considerably more effort to be a good boundary surveyor. And I think most people, if they were honest with you, would tell you that the thing that the thing that most licensed surveyors, soon to be licensed surveyors, struggle with when they go in to take our licensing exam is they struggle with the boundary portion, not with the construction portion. I think that's a that's a good general rule. So that's one reason. It just takes a lot of time and effort to be a good boundary surveyor. Um, a second reason is there's just easier ways to make money as a land surveyor. <laughs> so it takes a lot of extra effort to be a good boundary surveyor, and there's easier ways to make money. Uh, without a doubt, in my mind. Um, right now, at least, um, it's there's way more money to be made in construction surveying than there is in boundary surveying. And so it's harder to do. There's less money to be made. Fewer surveyors choose to specialize in that area. I think that may change over time as more and more construction surveying gets automated. But it's still the case right now that you can, you can make way more money as a construction surveyor than you can as a boundary surveyor. And the third reason why most surveyors aren't good boundary surveyors is because it's hard to compete with bad boundary surveyors. And I've talked about that in some of my other videos. So if you're going to be a good boundary surveyor, you're always going to be more expensive than the guys that are cutting corners. There's lots of boundary surveyors that do that. They cut corners. Boundary surveying is just one of those things you can cut corners on. And so if you're going to be a, a, a good boundary surveyor and that's going to be your business, you got to find a way to compete with those guys. And it's not easy. It's a challenge we face here every day at Redefine Horizons. Um, I think we do a pretty good job of it, but um, it's not easy for sure. <laughs> and a lot of guys, a lot of surveyors have a, have a difficult time figuring out how to do that. So for those three reasons, not a lot of good boundary surveyors running around out there. Most surveyors aren't good boundary surveyors. They are good construction surveyors or good topographic surveyors, and they are mediocre or bad boundary surveyors. So why is that important? Well, if you're buying or selling real estate, if you're investing in real estate, um, you want to make sure that you're spending your money wisely, right? And boundary surveys are expensive. You don't want to waste that money. Don't waste your boundary survey money on a bad boundary surveyor, right? You're not going to get a good product. And secondly, uh, broke what I call broken boundaries or <laughs> boundary surveys that have some kind of mistake or problem, they tend to have expensive ripple effects. So especially if you're on a site, what we call a constrained site, where the, the boundary and the building setbacks are really having an impact on the layout of the, of the site improvements, the, the design of the site improvements, um, you make a mistake on that boundary survey, that's, that's going to have huge implications right, for the real estate project. So um, it's expensive to hire bad boundary surveyors. You don't want to do that. So that's why it's important. So what are five ways you can identify a real boundary surveyor, a good boundary surveyor, somebody that's made the investment, the required investment in his, in his or her skills and knowledge to really be good at locating the boundaries of, of real estate. So I'm going to give you five ways. Okay, here's the first one. A real boundary surveyor goes out to the field to evaluate evidence. If your boundary surveyor hasn't put boots on the ground for your boundary survey, I question whether or not he's, he or she's doing a good job, right? So a good boundary surveyor, she's going to make the time to personally visit the site. And she's going to do that so she can evaluate all the appropriate evidence. So if you've got a, a surveyor that's working at a 400-person company and he's running uh, 14 field crews and he never sees a, a job site, he's not a good boundary surveyor. He's, he's just not doing a good job. It, it, I don't care how much you train your field crews. A good boundary surveyor wants to get on the site to evaluate some of the evidence. Okay, so that's the first thing you can ask. Is your licensed surveyor going to be out on the ground for the boundary survey? Second thing, a good boundary surveyor makes an effort to understand the law. So that includes just state law related to real estate. Okay, but it also includes what we call case law or common law. Okay, so if you've got a good boundary surveyor, that guy knows how to find, read, and understand court decisions, what we call case law. Um, you can't be a good boundary surveyor and not understand the current court decisions that are being made that, that impact the, the, the work that you do. 
So one of the, the most valuable things I learned in my college education was how to use a law library, right? And how to read and brief a case. Okay. So I don't think you can call yourself a good boundary surveyor if you don't have the, the ability to read um, court decisions that relate to, to boundary surveying law. That's the second way. Third way, good boundary surveyors don't do two monument tango. We've got another video where I talk about that. Uh, two monument tango is essentially you find two monuments and you put all the rest of the boundary in just using record measurements. And uh, you don't look for any other uh, competing evidence that might result in alternative solutions. Uh, that is a favorite shortcut of bad boundary surveyors. So if you're doing two monument tango, you're not a good boundary surveyor, right? And if you're hiring a boundary surveyor, you want to make sure, are they looking for all the corners, corner monuments and other evidence of the property, right? If the guy's just finding two monuments and putting everything else in based on measurements in the D, he's not doing a good job. Okay, so that's the third way. Good boundary surveyors, they don't do two monument tango. They're fully resolving the boundary of the parcel. Okay, the fourth thing is a good boundary surveyor understands land title. So boundary and land title, they're like two hands that, that fit together with each other. You can't understand land title without understanding some boundary surveying. You can't be a good boundary surveyor without understanding some land title. You know, how land title works in our system here in the United States, uh, what's insurable land title, what's not insurable land title. Um, you know, how you can, how a land surveyor can, can help cure defects in land title, what a cloud of title is, um, what unwritten rights are, you know, and how that, how that can cloud title. A good boundary surveyor understands all that, right? So he's, he's kind of a quasi land title officer, <laughs> right? A good boundary surveyor. Okay. And finally, the fifth thing is a good boundary surveyor can offer solutions to boundary and land title problems. So if this is what you do for a living, if, uh, if you're, if you've got a good boundary surveyor, she helps people fix problems with boundary or land title. Um, she's going to know how to do that after working on transaction after transaction after transaction. You know, bad boundary surveyors find a problem and walk away, right? But a good boundary surveyor understands enough about the law and enough about land title to be able to help clients fix problems and not just walk away and leave those problems for somebody else, right? So those are the five ways you know you've got a real boundary surveyor, right? A good boundary surveyor, not just some construction surveyor who's pretending he knows how to do boundary surveys, right? So again, just to review five ways, good boundary surveyor gets out in the field to evaluate evidence. She understands the law, including case law, court decisions. Three, they don't do two monument tango. They fully resolve the boundary of the parcel. Four, they understand land title. And five, they can offer you solutions when problems are found. Right? Those are the five ways you know you've got a good boundary surveyor. You get the real deal, not an imitation, but the real deal, right? So take some time, get to know your surveyor a little bit, make sure they're not just a construction surveyor, but that, that, that they've made the investment required to be a good boundary surveyor.